for today's session, um, I want to go over um, how to use the recurring uh, journal entries. So this is useful if you have um, entries that um, have a specific time they recur. Generally, that would be monthly, um, but we can always set that up the way we want to. So to start, we can go ahead and search up um, recurring general journals. So this is our demo company. And this is what the recurring uh, general journal template looks like. Uh, we have a batch name. We can have different batches we can set up. Uh, the first um, field in our line is the recurring method. And you can see that we have a, a few options here. Uh, this relates to the, uh, the recurring uh, amount of our line. So if we have a fixed amount, say something for um, a rent expense, that'll be the same every month. We'll choose fixed and that, that amount will stay constant. Um, variable is if it's uh, recurring, but it's, uh, it's a different amount um, every month. Um, putting it to variable will set the amount to zero um, af after it's posted. So we can go ahead and um, choose a different amount for it. Uh, balance is um, based on an allocation among uh, specified accounts. Uh, and then these reversing ones um, are, are similar to their counterparts, but um, a balancing entry will also be posted. Okay. So if we can go ahead and do a very simple fixed um, line item here. So we will choose fixed. Um, the recurring frequency is um, the, uh, the, um, the frequency we want the, uh, the entry to post. And what you'll put here are um, date formulas and you can search um, a list of Microsoft's date formulas, but I can go ahead and enter one here. Um, so if we do something like one day plus one month minus one day, this um, is a date formula that'll um, have the posting date the last day of, of the month, um, regardless of how many days there are in the month. So um, you have to be careful with um, setting these date formulas and, and taking into consideration that um, some months will have a different amount of days, but um, the Microsoft website will have um, a good resource to how to use these date formulas. Um, we'll need to put in a document number. So let's go ahead and say test rent. And uh, our work date right now is, is for uh, June 1st. Uh, so we can go ahead and change this to the end of last month. Okay. And so we can choose the account type uh, we want to post our entry to. Um, I'll go ahead and say it's a GL account and uh, this will be for rent. So I'll choose the rent expense and that'll fill in the description there. And now we can select the amount. Let's say we pay $8,000 a month for rent. Um, so this is the, the rent expense side. Um, there's two ways to have this balance. Uh, we can have another line here for, let's say the cash account that um, will balance this, uh, this rent expense or we can click into the allocated amount, which will do the same thing. Um, we choose our, our cash account here. So we'll choose our bank account. And then we can choose 
the allocation by quantity or percentage. We'll go ahead and just allocate 100% of that to our bank account here. And you'll see that we have the 8,000 uh, with the negative sign uh, to balance. And we'll close this. And that is uh, the gist of setting up the recurring journals. And so after we're, we're done with this line, we can go ahead and post it. So now that it's been posted, um, we'll see here that uh, since we chose the fixed recurring method, uh, nothing here should change. The amount is still the same at 8,000. The allocation is the same, uh, but the posting date has changed to the end of the current month um, because of our um, date formula we chose in a recurring frequency. If this was um, a variable recurring method, the amount here would change to zero. And so we would have to uh, set an amount for that. Um, but the posting date should have also changed to the end of uh, the current month. And that's how um, the recurring journal or general journal uh, works.